हेलो एवरी वन एंड वेलकम टू रोड मैप सो टू डेज टॉपिक इज प्लांट टिश्यू कल्चर पार्ट वन एंड इफ यू लाइक द वीडियो डोंट फॉरगेट टू क्लिक ऑन थम्स अप बटन बिलो यू कैन ऑल्सो सब्सक्राइब फॉर मोर वीडियो अपडेट्स एंड यू कैन ऑल्सो गिव योर सजेशन इन द कमेंट सेक्शन बिलो टॉपिक्स टू बी कवर्ड आर इंट्रोडक्शन बेनिफिट्स ऑफ टिश्यू कल्चर बेसिक स्ट्रक्चर एंड ग्रोथ ऑफ प्लांट कन्वेंशनल प्लांट ब्रीडिंग एंड प्लांट टिश्यू कल्चर terms used in tissue culture now benefits of tissue culture now plant tissue culture is one of the most rapidly growing areas of biotechnology because of its high potential to develop improved crops and or ornamental plants with the advances made in the tissue culture technology it is now possible to regenerate uh, species of any plant in the laboratory to achieve the uh, target of creating a new plant or a plant with desired characteristics tissue culture is often coupled with recombinant dna technology so the techniques of plant tissue culture have largely helped in the green revolution by improving the copy crop yield and the quality so the knowledge obtained from the plant tissue culture has contributed to our understanding of metabolism growth differentiation and morphogenesis of plant cells further developments in tissue cultures have have also helped to produce several pathogen free plants besides the synthesis of many biologically important components or uh, compounds including pharmaceuticals now because of this wide range of applications plant tissue culture attracts the attention of molecular biologists plant breeders and industrialists so there is a basic structure for the growth of the plant an adult plant basically consists of a stem and a root each with branches both the stem and root are characterized by the presence of apical growth regions which are composed of meristematic cells now these cells are the primary source for all the types of the plant now the plant growth and the development are uh, uh, takes place in two ways so that is determinate growth and indeterminate growth now the determinate growth is characterized by cessation of growth as the plant plants attain certain size and shape example leaves flowers and fruits now the indeterminate growth uh, this refers to the continuous growth of roots and stems under suitable conditions it is possible due to the presence of meristems which can proliferate continuously as the seed germinates and the seedling emerges the meristematic cells of the root apex multiply above the root apex the cell grow in length without multiplication some of the elongated cells of the outer layer develop into root hair to absorb employed uh, to absorb water and nutrients from the soil as the plant grows root cells differentiate into phloem and xylem phloem is also responsible for the absorption of nutrients while xylem absorbs water now the meristematic cells of the shoot apex divide leading to the growth of stem some of the stem cells differentiate and develop into leaf primordia and then leaves axillary buds which are present between the leaf primordia and elongated cell also possess meristems which can multiply and give rise to the branch and flowers now coming to the conventional plant breeding and tissue culture since the time immemorial immemorial man has been closely involved in the improvement of plants to meet his basic needs so the conventional methods which are employed for the crop improvement are very tedious and it takes a very long time now sometimes it also takes decades to complete 
So in the conventional breeding methods, it is not possible to introduce desired genes to generate new characters or products. So with the development in plant tissue culture, it is now possible to reduce the time for the creation of new plants with desired characteristics, transfer of new genes into plant cells and large scale production of commercially important products. So this is conventional plant breeding. Now there are some terms which are used in tissue culture. Explant, an excised piece of differentiated tissue or organ is regarded as an explant and the explant may be any part of the plant body that is leaf, stem or root. Coming to the callus, the callus is the in unorganized and undifferentiated mass of plant cells and it is generally when plant cells are cultured in a suitable medium, they divide to form callus that is a mass of parenchymatous cells. Dedifferentiation, it is a phenomenon of mature cells reverting to meristematic state to produce callus is called as dedifferentiation. And dedifferentiation is possible since the non-dividing quiescent cells of the explant when grown in a suitable culture medium revert to meristematic state. Now there is also a term which is called as redifferentiation. The ability of the callus cells to differentiate into a plant organ or whole plant is called as the redifferentiation. And uh, there is a term which I already said earlier, it is totipotency. It is an ability of individual cell to develop into a whole uh, plant, uh, which is referred to as cellular totipotency. And the inherent characteristic features of plant cells, namely dedifferentiation and redifferentiation, are responsible for the phenomenon of totipotency. So this is about the plant tissue culture. I hope you are enjoying the video. Stay tuned for more lessons to come. And uh, thank you for watching.